friends, welcome back to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher. Yes, you saw me blowing bubbles because today we are doing an investigation on bubbles. We're going to determine which soap solution makes the largest bubble and we're going to measure and determine the amount of soap that we put in the water which one will actually make the largest bubble. We're also going to talk about water molecules and we're going to talk about surface tension. So let's see what our materials are so we can get started. Before we start, let's talk about water. Remember, all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Water has two hydrogens and one oxygen. Remember, atom has three states, solid, liquid, and gas. If you see here, there's little movement with our water molecules and so we're at the cold level which means it's a solid if I move it to room temperature it's a liquid and they begin to move faster if we move it to hot now we have gas and they're moving faster Atoms are made up of smaller particles called electrons, protons, and neutrons. The protons and neutrons are found in the center of the atom called the nucleus. Protons have a positive charge, so we look back, you see the plus signs? That's our positive charge. Neutrons have no charge, and electrons are negatively charged. A molecule is a combination of atoms which are bound together. Our water molecule has two hydrogens and one oxygen which are held together by sharing the electrons. Notice guys as they're moving they are attracting to each other. When the water molecule is formed, the electrons from the hydrogen atoms move closer to the oxygen atom, making the electron placement unbalanced in the molecule. So you see how they're stuck together? Because you have your two hydrogens, your one oxygen, and then you can see your electrons and you can see your protons. The hydrogen ends of the molecule then becomes positively charged and the oxygen end of the molecule becomes negatively charged. And when that happens, they attract to each other. So that's why you see them stuck together. They look like little Mickey Mouse. All right. So we consider water to be a polar molecule. That is because of the positive and the negative attraction to each other. So, when we add soap molecule, we're going to see a different reaction. And we're going to talk later about surface tension when we get to the end. I created three soap solutions. I use Dawn dishwashing liquid, but you can use whatever type of dishwashing liquid soap that you would like to use. I use three-fourths cup of water in each cup. In cup A, I put two teaspoons of Dawn dishwashing liquid. Cup B, I put three teaspoons of Dawn dishwashing liquid in three-fourths cup of water. And in cup C, I put five teaspoons of dishwashing liquid into three-fourths cup of water. You can make your solution different than I did, but these are the solutions we're going to test out today. Which solution? Solution A with two teaspoons, solution B with three, or solution C with five teaspoons of water? Which one will make the largest bubble? Make your prediction. Pause the video 
and discuss and come up with a prediction which one you think will make the largest bubble. We're going to test cup A first, friends, and we're going to test it three times. Just take your straw, put your finger on top and hold it, and then lift up the liquid and put it on your table. Take your straw and put it at an angle and blow gently. bubble is large and that was with two two teaspoons of Dawn let's measure in centimeters we're going to measure the diameter that means going across the circle all right this one is 23 centimeters 23 centimeters Do you think, now that we have three teaspoons of Dawn, do you think the bubble will be larger or around the same size? Here we go. My goodness that one went on and on guys that one was a large one let's see what we come up with Oops, sorry. I'm gonna do it the longest way all right this one is 26 centimeters so I'm going to record cup B trial one 26 Amazing! Could you see the beautiful colors reflecting off of the bubble? Do you know why those colors were reflecting? Let's measure. This one is 27 centimeters diameter. Measuring across. I'm going to do both ways and make sure. Actually, it's 29. 29. We're going to do one more test. Wow. Okay, this one's going to be smaller, I can tell. It looks smaller. Let's measure 
okay this one is 24 centimeters but remember we're taking the average of the three okay so now we've tested cup A to test cup B and now we're going to test cup C remember in cup C I have five teaspoons of Dawn dishwashing liquid with three-fourths cups of water three-fourths cup of water I'm gonna clean up so based on what you've learned so far guys Do you think this solution is going to make a larger bubble or not? Also, what controls, what's one of the things that's controlling the size of the bubble? One other thing besides the dishwashing liquid? Leave me a comment below. All right, so let's get ready and do this last test. Wow. Guys, when you do this experiment, you're going to have so much fun watching these bubbles as they grow and grow. All right, this one is 27 and a half centimeters. 27 and a half centimeters. So it's larger than the one in cup B because it was the first one, the largest one was, well, the first one was 26, but the largest was 29. So let's see if we get one in the 30s. One tip I'll give you is to blow gently. You don't want to blow too hard. If you blow too hard it will collapse. So you want to blow gently to get it as large as you can. Wow, that was large. Let's see what we got. All right, this one is, let's do it both ways. I like to measure both ways. Okay. This one is, oh, this one is 30. This one is 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters. How many of you said that cup C would make the largest bubble? All right, this is our last trial. Let's measure. I'm going to go across. This one measured 26. I'll check the other way for you. And on this side, it was 27. So we're going to put 27. Okay. We have different numbers, so that's why you're going to take the average because you want to get the average number to see which solution made the largest bubble because if you notice, my bubbles changed each time there were none the exact same size. And so an average gives us a better uh, piece of data that we can use. How do we actually form those bubbles? Well, remember friends, I told you that water molecules are polarity, meaning that they attract to each other. This attraction is called cohesion. Co because of the cohesion, water molecules below the surface is attracted equally in all directions.
When you look at this glass of water in the picture and you see the water going down its sides and you look at the top part of it, it looks as if there is a skin on the surface. Well, it does look like that because of the attraction of the molecules going down the side of the water. And this phenomenon is called surface tension. The surface tension of the water is strong enough so that the water molecules will not stretch enough to form lasting bubbles. But when we add soap to it, the soap molecules the attractive forces on its surface becomes weaker and this allows the bubbles to form by blowing air into this soapy mixture. Soap and water molecules attract one to another and this attraction because they are unlike molecules is called adhesion and distribute themselves into layers. So guys when we put that mixture of soap molecules and water molecules together, it sort of releases uh, that stretch so that those bubbles can form and then we really see that skin look on top of that bubble. Now, when you saw the colors, all the beautiful colors on top of your bubbles when you were blowing them, that's because the light has reflected off and we can see multiple colors as we're blowing it up. Now that you've had fun making bubbles and you've learned about water molecules, polarity, cohesion, adhesion, and the big phenomenon, surface tension, I want you to come up with your own test. Decide what could you change different in this test to come up with your own data. Remember to do more than one trial and also get the averages of your trial. Test out your solution. Maybe it's a different dishwashing liquid. Maybe it's three different dishwashing liquids. Maybe it's less water. You decide what test you would like to design. Use the scientific method. Write your question, your prediction. Come up and do your ex exploration and gather data and then write your conclusion. I want you to leave me a comment below when you complete your own experiment design and let me know what you did and how it worked. But next time, the next video I do, I'm going to do something different with bubbles. So look forward to part two on bubbles. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful and great day. See you next time, friends.